All right, I think we can get started. Thank you all for joining us for today's Lunchtime Art Talk, which as many of you know, is a weekly series led by Hammer Curators on works from our collection. This series will be focused on artists featured in Made in LA, a version. Free reservations to visit the Hammer are now available after a, almost a year. So please visit our website to reserve your time to see our biennial opening April 17th. We look forward to welcoming you back. My name is Nika Chilowicz. I'm a curatorial assistant at the Hammer Museum and I will be facilitating this afternoon's talk on Candace Williams. After the presentation, I will be able to answer all of your questions. A few Zoom notes before we begin. When the presentation starts, please select speaker view in the top right corner of your screen and in the top middle of your screen, please click on view options to ensure side by side and fit to window are checked. Please note that today's program is being recorded. You have the option to toggle your camera on and off using the camera icon in the bottom left corner, whatever you're most comfortable with. You will remain on mute until the end of the presentation, at which point I will unmute those who have questions. During the presentation, if you have questions for me, including any technical questions, you can ask those using the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. So I think we can get started. If uh, you, uh, Josephine, you can bring up my slides. Um, so I have the pleasure and the daunting task of um, talking about the dense and academically informed decolonial visual language within uh, the work of Candace Williams. Candace is actually an artist whose work and whose person were really important to me when I was doing my master's in Mexico City, um, studying and focusing on uh, lineages of decolonial feminist, feminism, especially as it pertains to the colonial histories in Latin America. Um, and I met Candace in Mexico City and the rigor with which she approached her research images and collage, which is something that we'll look at um, here, was extremely important to me as well as uh, providing a conceptual framework for from which, from which uh, to understand my own whiteness and the own uh, colonial legacies that I consciously and unconsciously perpetuate or participate in. So uh, Candace's work spans uh, is at both the Hammer and at the Huntington. And at the Hammer, um, there's a selection that has been made of previous collage works. While at the Huntington, she's embarked on a truly incredible site-specific interrogation of um, a file cabinet there that has to do with the taxonomical ordering of plants and plants, which ones were successful or able to propagate and which ones weren't. So I, I thought today that I would use um, an earlier work and a body of earlier work as a sort of guide from which to approach Candace's vi visual language and understand uh, her larger disciplinary, transdisciplinary approach to collage, which includes performance, publishing, editorial work, pedagogical work, and then end by looking at um, at some of the newer works, um, like the one that she's done for the Huntington. And in particular, I'm interested here, and I've chosen images that look specifically at the role that gender and race plays within Candace's work, um, and an exploration within her work of the unmarked positions that white whiteness and masculinity play. And I have a quote here uh, from Donna Haraway uh, that says, this gaze of the white male mythically inscribes all the marked bodies and makes the unmarked category claim the power to see and not be seen to represent while escaping representation. So this first work uh, titled Pins and Needles comes out of a body of work that formed a show called Soft Colony in 2016. And I really, uh, I, I chose to start with this image because I really think it offers us 
uh, way into the decolonial artistic voice and the challenging of the colonial script that I think uh, is entirely unique to Candace's work and that she's an artist who is, is engaging um, these narratives and uh, in such a special and unique way. So Candace's works, collage works, really function to me as scripts. They're fueled by deeply personal concerns. They intentionally resist narrative, narrativization in a traditional sense. And by that, I mean, she's not telling you anything outright, although these images are rife with institutional voices that reflect cultural economies and narrative conventions that circulate us and that we um, perpetuate in our contemporary culture. So things like the icon, the archetype, popular figure, figures are layered in Candace's work against uh, historical images of different registers that expose colonial histories and the racist and misogynistic values that they uphold. So she really takes, is able to, as you can see in this work, uh, filled with um, images from popular culture, she's able to take this seemingly innocuous or organic form of expression that we have in our so-called democratic or transparent cultural sphere and expose uh, images as objects or weapons that enforce values that uphold heteronormative masculinity at the expense of the black and indigenous body. And you can see in, in this earlier work how the this work is saturated with images of uh, white femininity and white female hysteria. And there's a notable absence of that black body. Um, and in later works, we'll see how, how this sort of lays the framework or, or the framework from which to explore um, black figuration and the performance of black blackness and gender um, and other racial histories. So uh, we can go to the next uh space so so if we look this is a, a new work from the huntington um and i think in comparison with the previous work we can really see how um candace uses collage and image making to recreate these hypocritical spaces of ontological absence and saturation that uh blackness provides the sort of consumption of blackness as a fragmented gesture and as a way to portray or uphold um, colonial ideas of power and the, the very complicated relationship that whiteness has as it is hidden and upheld within particularly feminist critiques or critiques of gender. Um, yes, so this is a, a, a collage that's part of her installation at the Huntington. Uh, which consists of a series of portraits that the artist has called uh, portraits of invasive species. And here in, in this work, it all comes from her exploration and research that she did into a file cabinet um, that was called a dead plant file that documented plants which failed to propagate. So she uses the plant and a really iconographical approach to ecological representation and the ordering of the natural world as a vehicle for exploring colonialist ideologies and the extractive economic histories they have been in service of. Um, so in these works, the idea of taxonomy itself is exposed as a colonial structure. And she looks at the way that visual languages and institutional scientific, scientific languages like that of uh, botanical nomenclature um, and what is deemed propagatable or successful um, are really rooted in these histories of industrial capitalism imper and imperious ideologies and of the, the colonial enterprises hierarchical understanding of the natural world and of black and other non-white bodies within it. Um, these works particularly look at the histories of trans the trans transatlantic slavery, um, as well as other forms of non-renumerated labor imposed on the black and non-white body. Um, the works at the Huntington were organized around histories of the cash crop and of plants as a bloodless colonial victim. So that's a quote from an interview that Candace gave. Um, which 
were mined from the colonial reaches of the world and displays displayed for a commodity spectacle. Um, and there's a, a, a great video on the Huntington's website that we'll place in the chat um, that uh, where she describes uh, her process for this work. Um, so I chose this particular uh, portrait um, and you can see that there is a very dense and long quote that I, I think um, is really demonstrative of Candace's hydra-like trans transdisciplinary approach to an interrogation of mythology, of cultural mythologies. So you can see uh, in this work and in relation especially to the title, which I, I wrote out in full and placed next to it, a, a semiotic interpretation of visual culture. Um, and by that, I mean visual culture and cultural expression in Candace's work are being engaged and layered and cut out and fragmented as symbols that represent institutional um, histories and agendas. So in, in this work, you can see how she layer, there's an anachronistic layering of archival images from a range of registers within our visual culture um, that are rooted again in this deep understanding of the colonial enterprise. So you can see how um, at the center of the work, there's sort of this central icon and this symmetry that's created that uh, to me references <clears throat> traditional um, early modernist uh, Judeo-Christian, Christian and Catholic imagery in particular, particular from medieval representation to uh, the early Renaissance, which is really this time in which Western representation is being enforced throughout the world as um, the colonization and conquering of indigenous peoples are happening. So you have this central winged figure in the middle whose face is made up of a composition of a performer who she works with regularly um, and Rihanna, if I'm not mistaken. And then in the lower registers of the work, you see um, an interplay of fragments of what I believe or think and see as um, early ethnographic images of non-Western or savage or underdeveloped civilizations, uh, uh, female bodies in repose in nature. And then this sort of interspersing of <clears throat> these pre-Columbian forms of, of the Venus, which um, is particularly interesting to me because these ones particularly come out of um, a Western representational history and understanding of the feminine ideal, but these same figures were repeated throughout cultures in pre-colonial cultures in Latin America and Asia. And really, I think layered with the other representations of the female body in the work get at this sort of clash of values and the violent imposition of one cosmological and ideological ordering of what femininity means, what identity means, what uh, subjectivity means for the black and non-white body within a global structural order that privileges whiteness. And um, I'll also mention here, which is something that appears in, a, in many of her collage works is the backgrounds, um, these sort of moments of gestural application of paint that to me look like they could be Rorschach uh, studies, um, but also to me are a nod to histories of abstract expressionism and US conceptual art histories and the sort of similar concurrent privileging of the white male subjectivity over everything else. Um, and the titles as well um, are a composite of different historical quotes put together that I think really demonstrate the ways in which images are read by Candace as texts and texts are read as um, visual, as, as visual or cultural forms of performative uh, expression. So if we can go to the next slide. I just included a detail here um, of the earlier work that's at the Hammer um, to really show in, in these works, and we'll look at some more examples of them a little farther along, 
Candace layered um, internal endoscopic imageries of the body. In this one, you're looking at the inside, a dissection of uh, an eye with early representations of uh, depictions of stage depictions of female hysteria that were used in early psychoanalytic uh, discourse to describe um, the female state, which was, you know, extremely limiting of femininity, but still based solely around the expression of white femininity and its proximity to hysteria and mental unwellness, which sets the stage for these questions of these, these matrices of hierarchies in which um, as you move towards what is good, what is healthy, what is well within an imperialist uh, ideological worldview, you're moving towards whiteness and, and what that means for um, an erasure of the black body and other non-white bodies. So uh, if we can go to the next slide. And here I just also included a cross section of uh, the earlier Belladonna portrait at the Huntington to just show the incredible uh, layering of, of visual culture that Candace achieves within her work that is so visceral. It creates this haptic experience where all of these histories are sort of collapsing on one another and you're hit with um, and flooded with um, a deeply researched series of images that expose the ways in which, or get at the ways in which our contemporary cultural economies um, perpetuate colonialist values um, and whiteness and masculinity and what that means for non-white, the erasure of or the performance of non-white bodies in proximity to or existing within these uh, cultural structures. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, I just decided, I included another uh, selection of collage works from 2019 in which you can really see how she, Candace is, plays with registers of institutional voices. Again, I think in both of these works, we're looking at um, ethnic, like at images that come from the field of ethnography, um, a field also uh, rife with similar colonialist agendas of explaining the inferiority of the non-white Western subject as a sort of mechanism or tool for justifying uh, the violent imposition of economic systems, global economic systems uh, rooted in slavery, but that, you know, we see are continuing now in the sort of degradation of the natural world and of um, non-white bodies. Uh, so, and again, th there's this layering of this, these types of images, uh, which are a result of deep and persistent archival research throughout Candace's work with these extremely gestural, violent, emotional um, interventions of paint, which underlay them. And again, the play in title and image and this sort of resisting of any sort of didactic or formal narrative uh, um, expressions. Candace is not uh, holding your hand and guiding you through these images. Um, she is in fact layering, using every opportunity that she has when engaging with the viewer to layer these institutional voices and to expose their internal hypocrisies and their violence. So the quotes for both of these works are, were, are taken from Society of the Spectacle, a guide, a guide to board text. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. I um, wanted to include two other earlier collage works on plexiglass, which is another medium that Candace has worked with uh, throughout her career. Um, which gets at this question of performativity and the ways in which, uh, and theatricality and the ways in which blackness and femininity in, in, in these works and in the works that we'll look at later are performed within uh, our cultural economies. So, and also these two works uh, demonstrates Candace's use of 
Greek mythology in particular, um, but of these sort of foundational archetypal representations of uh, female subjectivity. Um, and in this one, she's overlaying um, black representation on top of these sort of foundational characters to sort of um, look at or imagine the colliding of these two worlds and what, what that means. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, I also wanted to include a selection uh, from of Candace's readers. Candace has a press called Cassandra, which she founded uh, uh, in, collect in collective with other participants in 2016. Um, the myth of Cassandra is of a priestess who's cursed to utter true prophecies that no one believes. And I included a selection of, of these readers to sort of give us an idea of how Candace approaches language as a discursive space. And again, a deeper understanding of uh, the aesthetics of institutional voice that runs parallel to her formal collage works. Um, and, and, and these readers, I'll just say, and Candace's research in particular, um, asks questions of Black radical scholarship, uh, is rooted in Black histories of Black radical scholarship and Black radical feminist scholarship. Um, and the readers, uh, Candace has said, are much like her collages, a working through of her own anxieties around issues of racism, classism, binary gender expectations, sexual harms, harm, the carceral state, and the libidinal economy. And these run as sort of parallel scripts to her art objects um, and are these really beautiful ways to read the collages um, and gain a deeper understanding of them. So these, this first selection of images are, are selections from the reader on the white savior. So you can see how uh, the reader opens with an image from the Green Book and a pretty horrific and widely celebrated uh, representation of centering white masculinity within what was is otherwise a very um, historical narrative of uh, Black excellence, Black creative excellence. Uh, next is an article from The Atlantic that it looks at the white savior industrial complex. And next to that is an academic text that uh, is, has been very important to me in my curatorial work, especially when living in Mexico, uh, called On White Fragility, which I really recommend that everyone uh, read, especially um, all of my fellow white uh, museum professionals. Um, and then in closing, uh, a meme that says we don't need another hero. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, these are selections from the reader on devices of the fetishes. And again, Candace pulls in a pop culture reference, um, film stills from the movie Monsters Ball, which are opening images, the opening image to the reader and also repeat in the table of contents. Um, and then, you know, alongside the range of academic and more popular theoretical texts, um, Candace has included these sort of cyclical diagrammatic collages in which she overlays um, texts on representations of, uh, the, of the black male body. They're sort of schematic drawings, which um, in a sense, all of her uh, collage works are. Um, if we can go to the next slide. These are uh, selections from the reader on cannibalism, blackface and minstrelsy. And the in, in images of this reader, you can really get a sense of um, her in, intuitive and astute and highly uh, intelligent ability with social media and digital culture, particularly as it relates to the consumption, cannibalization and appropriation of black expression within social media and popular cultures. And I just loved putting this series of images together because you have a Twitter feed, um, an online article, but that's set against a really sort of raw photocopying of Erie Lott's book on love and theft, blackface minstrels and the American working class. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, some images on her reader, uh, Re Black Twitter. And again, this sort of pairing of 
popular culture images, memes, online uh, theoretical texts or digital theoretical texts and more formal academic texts um, that you see throughout the readers. And if you go to the next slide, I'll just include um, that Candace is one of the few artists that I know that has um, in the same way that she conducts a rigorous and ongoing um, our exploration into archival histories, institutional archival histories of academia, science, and art history. She's also um, prolific in her research on social media and on the forms of sort of self-generated um, critique for, of Black voices, uh, from Black voices of colonial um, power structures within contemporary media. And so I just wanted to include here a selection of uh, posts from Mandy Harris Williams, uh, known as Ideal Black Female, which can, in this reader are interspersed with the other texts. Um, so if you go to the next slide. And this uh, I'll just touch on briefly before returning to the collage works. Um, uh, is her, Candace's work with performance. Um, and here I'll just mention the way in which uh, Candace engages with performance of race and gender through um, iterative collaborative performance works where she'll work with the same uh, group of performers, performers and the works function as sort of staging of social scripts their experimentations with social choreography. Um, and again, they use uh, traditional mythological archetypes, in this case, uh, Eurydice and the story of Eurydice, um, to look at the performance of the Black body in proximity to white people and white structures. So, um, I think the performance work really allows you to understand when looking at the collages, the importance of theatricality and choreography, the ways in which her works really function as haptic or performative um, expressions of how she as an artist, but then how we as an audience relate to the gendered uh, black body. Um, and its representation uh, within a spectacle economy of, of dictated by white desire. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I just uh, wanted to include a series of images from uh, these performances, which Candace has documented uh, since 2017, uh, as they as the performance has been repeated throughout the world. And, and from that, she's put together a film, which then she oftentimes will play and overlay with yet another performance work. And you can see between the readers and then now in these performance works, the way in which um, Candace is working through registers of creative expression that defy hierarchical, canonical understandings of um, art making and the art practice. Um, she moved, yeah, that, so next slide. Uh, another image that I thought was incredibly beautiful, um, which to me sort of is, offers a nod to her work with plexiglass or reflective materials in her collages. Um, and there's this really haunting image of the performer whose name I'm forgetting right now, uh, I'll find it, um, being reflected within this glass wall, but separated from another black body that uh, is sort of diffuse and uh, who, whose subjectivity you can't uh, recognize. So next slide. Um, another performance uh, iteration of Eurydice uh, where the performer is overlaid over uh, uh, video work. Next slide. So now we'll get back uh, to this exploration of the gaze and the representation of white femininity um, and how they relate to scientific research. Um, in this case, the field of psychoanalysis um, and sort of canonical uh, understandings of um, female subjectivity within Western art and cultural history. 
Um, so this body of work, uh, Pins and Needles, or this individual work comes out of a body of work that was part of an exhibition called Soft Colony. So if we go to the next slide, here's an installation view where you can see that work um, at Night Gallery, which where the exhibition was shown uh, in 2016. And if you go to the next slide, uh, I included another installation view just to get an idea of the scale of these different works. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, here are some detail uh, images of a work called Cervical Smile, where you can really see how Candace is establishing a visual language for understanding um, the idealized female form and the violent histories of whiteness that that form is both entrapped within and perpetuates. Um, there is this sort of central um, art historical uh, figure of like the icon that is comprised of fragments of female bodies, in this case, uh, like teeth or these floating heads of popular uh, cultural figures, all white women. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, this sort of fragmentation of the female body and the depiction of female wellness as a superficial, um, fragmented and reductive form that denies any understanding of the actual female experience, um, I think is really, is interesting within this body of work and sets um, itself up as a framework for uh, the the newer works and um, her a more expansive exploration of colonial histories and uh, the ordering of the natural world and and I like this work in particular sort of like as a code for that body of work because you see what are what seem to me to be these white female uh, uh, smiles and perfect teeth literally cannibalizing. Um, fragmented non-white bodies in the background. And I set that against another earlier work uh, called, not called Health, it's called They Glance, You Stare, uh, which in which Candace cut out the eyes of, at that, what, who were at that point, the highest grossing uh, porn stars, black porn stars, and created a work um, that gets at this question of the disembodied gaze, who has the authority and power to look and who is observed. So I know I'm running out of time, so we'll go fast now, next slide. Um, again, these are just um, other representations that show uh, the ways, the way in which Candace builds out um, the uh, visual histories that these foundational iconographies or archetypes of femininity and whiteness um, are perpetuated throughout our cultural history. So you can see in the Venus to the left, you have Marilyn Monroe, Britney Spears, Madonna's uh, adopted African child. And on the right, um, uh, 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 incorporation again of the controlled natural world and the highly curated botanical world. Um, in a work that's called Passing Lilies, which is filled with uh, Black women who were able to pass within white culture. So next slide. Uh, and again, um, works that that expand and extrapolate on this idea of surveillance and of control of the non-white body. And this, I would say, really shows the way in which uh, Candace's archival research is um, also uh, in, informs a deep understanding of contemporary media culture, social media culture, and what uh, queer theorist Paul Preciado has called the techno-pharmaceutical era of control, these internalized value systems that we perpetuate as we distribute our own image across media platforms. Uh, so next image. Next. Um, and again, I just wanted to sort of return to this incredible dense collage work at the Huntington um, and uh, with hopefully a little bit of a greater framework at understanding um, the ways in which Candace's collage works explore um, histories of colonialism and the relationship between the control 
of black and other non-white bodies and the control um, and exploitation of the natural world. So next. And in closing, uh, these are some images that I think um, show the evolution of her uh, really ambitious and successful site-specific work at the Huntington um, at the uh, on display now at the Institute for Contemporary Art at Virginia Commonwealth University, in which Candace has used these uh, elements of collage and sculpture to create an entire uh, immersive environment, um, a curated uh, ecological landscape. So next side, slide. Um, again, the, the, this um, you know highly choreographed. Um, ordering of the natural world steeped in Eurocentric values. So next slide, I think it's my final slide. Um, just some detail shots as well of, of the plant forms um, that, that uh, comprise that installation. Um, so at this point, I'll open it up to questions. I'm uh, sorry if I rambled a little bit too much. Um, the work clearly is dense and um, it is as much about my own subjective interpretation of them and my own context, you know, as, as a white queer woman and my ability to understand them is really, I think, is steeped in the ways in which I am blinded by my own privilege within these colonialist hierarchies. Um, and that is something that I think is really important when looking at her work is that they challenge, um, not only do they unite a, a group of black voices and viewers um, who can understand and relate to uh, some of the more, um, so, some of the images that she is utilizing, but they also really challenge and question the white viewer um, to engage with the discomfort of the histories of uh, oppression that we, you know, uh, have benefited from and which we knowingly and unknowingly uh, perpetuate. So um, now I will begin answering some of your questions. Again, you can ask questions through the Zoom chat feature located at the bottom of your screen or verbally. To ask a verbal question, please either raise your hand like this or click on the participants icon at the bottom of your screen and on the raise hand icon. And I'll call on you, unmute your mic so you can ask your question. And let me open up the chat here and see um, if there are questions. So um, Ike has a long question. Um, Ike, my co-creator, and he says, could you maybe speak on the sense of ungendering or troubling gender in the collages at the Huntington alongside this inquiry into botanical invasive specimens that failed? Just thinking about how most plants are monoecious. Maybe that's an added exploration for Candace, just thinking out loud. But also how myth and metaphor get worked into black people through nature. Growing up in Australia, there was the Flora and Fauna Act that fueled this myth that First Nations indigenous people were considered human. It was a myth, but the fact remains black and indigenous First Nation folks were and still are treated like animals in Australia. And I think those are uh, very insightful comments and questions. And I do, I, I, I do see in this newer body of work at the Huntington, the um, a real uh, uh, attempt to uh, problematize questions, binary questions of gender, um, especially in the work that I showed this central figure is, you know, a, a sort of hermaphroditic or trans female body. Um, and there is this convergence of, um, of, you know, how registers of binary gender constructs and um, white and non-white bodies uh, within a uh, colonial history um, are fueled by um, the myth of the savage, you know, a foundational myth of the savage that was used to conquer um, and exploit uh, non-Western lands in, like, in Latin America, for example, um, and in Australia as well. 
Um, so that's a great insight, Pat, Edgar. Does anybody else have um, questions? Um, I'm looking through the chat here. Um, Charles, are you here? Do you have thoughts? I don't see Charles. Um, okay, well, uh, most of your videos are off and you're muted. So I guess we can end unless uh, anybody wants to um, say anything. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, and I also uh, have to thank, get, offer a special thanks to Bank of America for presenting Main LA 2020 Aversion. To support programs like this and future programs, we invite you to become a Hammer member or donate to the museum by visiting our website. Be sure to join us next week at next week's Lunchtime Art Talk, where Chief Curator Connie Butler will present our Made in LA artist, Arya Dean. And please sign up to come to the museum and to go to the Huntington. These works are so extraordinary to see in person. And uh, I also want to remind you to vote um, for your favorite participant uh, for the Moan Award. Um, so thank you, everyone, and have a lovely Wednesday. <laughs>